Oh, hello! My name is Mara, and welcome to Books Like Woe. So, it is a beautiful Sunday morning here in Nashville. Uh, it is not raining for once, which in the last, let's say, eight months has been um, a rarity. And uh, I am gonna go out and do a bunch of errands. Yesterday I had like super lazy day. I literally did not leave the house. I gave myself permission to defer all of my like actual things I needed to get done to today. So that was very nice. It was nice to just sort of like chill. I got a lot of reading done. And in general in April, my reading has been going really well. So I had a lot of things kind of left over from March that I finished up kind of towards the beginning of the month. And then um, yesterday, I also had a few things in progress that I knocked out. So I think I've already read nine books so far in April, which is great. And I'm going to talk to you about what those are and what some of my plans coming up are. Then I'm going to go run some errands. So I'm talking to you in front of my TBR cart and uh, just little cash video here. So let's get into it. By the way, you're probably going to see tea coming in and out of this. It's like I said, it's the morning and I'm getting ready and I made myself some Almond Joy tea. This comes from my favorite tea shop, which is Neverland Tea Salon in Vancouver, Canada. Um, anyway, just side note there, let's get into this. So I guess the other thing I should say about the things I've been reading so far is that f by far this is a better reading month already than March was in terms of like just me actually really enjoying what I'm reading. I have had two books so far that were disappointments. So the first was The Vanishing Stare by Maureen Johnson. And I'll talk about both of these more in my month end wrap up. Uh, highlights are this is the second book in the Truly Devious trilogy, which is like a YA mystery set at a boarding school and in there and there's like a dual timeline happening. So there's a mystery happening in the 1930s. And then there's also some shenanigans happening in the present day. At first, when I started reading this, I thought that it might be better than the first book. But as I got into it, I really, yeah, I have some problems with this in terms of some of the choices that were made. And also just in terms of um, pacing. And I knew this after the first book, I, I think I said like, hey, I think that by the time I get to the end of this trilogy, I'm gonna have thought it should have been a duology or even just a single book. Definitely feel that way. There's a lot of, I just think there's a lot of like unnecessary drama in this. This I gave it three stars. It wasn't terrible and I will finish the series, but I think I'm actually gonna unhaul my physical copies and just go with E because this is, this is not gonna end up being a favorite series. Maureen Johnson seems to have problems finishing her series. Cause like, I really like the name of the star. That is a great YA like thrillery thing with like a supernatural element. But the follow-up books were just like genuinely pretty pretty terrible. Um, I mean, they're not the worst, but they just, they didn't work in this. Anyway, this seems to be a theme with her. So yeah, I'm going to finish the trilogy, but it's not, it's going to end up being like a three and a half star instead of like a four star. So that's a little disappointing. And then the other disappointment was Ocean Light. Again, three stars. It wasn't like this was terrible. I just think it's a 400 page book and the first hundred pages, like nothing happens. And also it was and again, I'll talk about this more in my month and wrap up probably, but this series is starting to really repeat its storylines a lot on the micro level. Like the macro plot, I think is still going really interesting places, but the individual stories, like there's about seven different plots she does in them. And I'm starting to get a little tired of that. So once I really got into this, like once I got to page like 150 or so, I was like into it and I love the side changeling world. And so like, I enjoyed my time with it once I kind of got into it, but yeah, it's getting a little repetitious and I'm getting nervous that that's gonna start annoying me. Anyway, technically a disappointment, even though it was still three stars. And then a couple of things that I quite liked, even if they weren't favorites, um, one was Jessica Clare's The Cowboy and His Baby. Uh, I really love Jessica Clare. She's probably, mm, she's up there with my favorite contemporary romance authors, though mm, less so lately. I don't know. These aren't tropes that I typically love, but I love her authorial voice so much that I was down with it. And, ooh, I just noticed that this book is glaring at me. So let's move that. So like it's a cowboy trope and a like accidental pregnancy trope and hence the cowboy and his baby, which are not my favorites, but her voice is so great that it like carried it through quite a bit. So I ended up giving it 3.5 stars. I think if it had been tropes I liked better, I would have given it um, better marks. But yeah, like she just, she always delivers just like an enjoyable contemporary romance experience for me. So I read that and enjoyed it. And then I also read If Beale Street Could Talk by James Baldwin. This was the pick for the book 
club that I'm in uh, at my local independent bookstore. And I really enjoyed this. I gave it four stars. I think I don't quite know why I didn't love this because like obviously the thematic content is amazing. Like this is written in 1974 and uh, could have been written today in terms of just being very relevant to the Black Lives Matter movement and kind of the conversations we're having about wrongful incarceration and police um, bias towards non-white people. And I mean, this basically is like the novelized version of a Colony and a Nation, which I loved last year from Chris Hayes, um, which is like a nonfiction book about like kind of different ways that non-white people are policed in the US versus white people. So thematically, this is like five stars. It's amazing. I think there's something about this authorial voice that doesn't like fully, like I didn't fully love the writing, even though I objectively understand that it's good. Like there's nothing wrong with it. It just didn't personally fully connect with me. And I think honestly, this doesn't have chapter breaks. And I, I honestly wonder if that was part of what kept me from loving it because I couldn't figure out good places to pause with it. So I think sometimes I paused in weird places and had a hard time like picking it back up. I don't know. So I, I'm a little surprised that this wasn't a 4.5 or a 5 star, but all that to say, it's still a 4 star. I really recommend this. I read a really interesting article about how this and the movie version that came out recently thematically have some conflict to them because the movie version is very like apparent I've not seen it yet but apparently is like really like lusciously shot and just like beautiful and it sort of elides over some of the rougher parts of the book and I, it was an interesting article I think it was in the New Yorker about how basically that undercuts what the story is about like making that choice undercuts some of what the story is about but that it also the flip side of that is that it makes it much more of like a love story and sort of like a really beautiful like um, lovingly shot story about um, a, a couple of young black kids who are in a really tough situation and how like maybe that's a better st I don't know it was a, it was an interesting article like about adaptations um so I, I enjoyed that I'm gonna the book club is um this afternoon so I'm interested in talking to people about that maybe so anyway I would definitely recommend this if you saw the movie or have heard, seen this hyped because of the movie totally worth reading the book originally it's not long I think it's like 200 pages ish um, yeah, it was a it's a American classic, a modern American classic for a reason. It's very, very good. And then guys, I have had three, count them three 4.5 star books this month. And I may ultimately bump up one of those to a five star. So first, let's talk about the fact that I finished the Book of the Ancestor series uh, this month. So I, I was in progress on Grey Sister in March and I actually finished it. I gave this 4.5 stars and then I had an arc of Holy Sister and then my physical copy eventually came in um, of, uh, of Holy Sister. I gave that four stars and then the other 4.5 thing I had was Bound, which is a short story that comes between these two. I gave that 4.5 stars as well. I have an entire review of this series that's going up, I believe, on Friday. So I'm not going to get into this too much because I basically it's a gush review of me just being like, here are all the things I love about this series. Uh, I gave so overall I had two books or works in this series. I gave a four star and I had two that I gave a 4.5 to. Overall, the experience of reading this series was 4.5. I absolutely this is like one of my new favorite trilogies I've read. I think it just delivers in every way that matters to me. And yeah, I mean, like, I've not heard a lot of people who didn't at least like, if not really like or love this series. And I think for good reason. It's just really, really good, guys. And yeah, you can hear my full thoughts in the series review that I'll have up on Friday. But TLDR is that I love this. And then my 4.5 that I may end up bumping up to a five star, depending on how I'm thinking about it later, is the Austin Playbook by Lucy Parker. <sighs> It is not a surprise that this was awesome because I tend to love Lucy Parker, but this book was just so delightful, so charming, exactly what I like from contemporary romance, which is not a lot of angsty bullshit, genuinely enjoyable, like, like not likable is not the right word, like characters that are compelling and smart and do logical things based on the situations they find themselves in. 
people who are not afraid to love like I that is my least favorite conflict ever like that's not what's happening here and like textually the trope she is playing with like she says this is a Slytherin and a Hufflepuff who fall in love so it is a Slytherin dude who is a grumpy theater critic and a Hufflepuff gal who is like one of the like she's a well-known stage actress she comes from like a family of really prominent actors think maybe sort of like the Barrymores called the Carltons and they all want her to be like a dramatic actress but she's more into musicals so like she has like some professional conflict he's also got professional conflict because he's trying to get this movie made and like the long and the short of it is they end up sort of thrown together because at his family's country estate which is like falling down and they're doing this production to try to like save it. There is this like kind of boutique playhouse and they're going to have like a live TV presentation of a murder mystery peopled by Jane Austen characters. Oh, guys, like it just had so it's like ugh, so many tropes that I loved. I just had such a lovely time reading this. It's well written. It's not too long. It doesn't draw out a bunch of conflict that's needless. It's just like they're so adorable together and it has like such a romantic scene in it that's like genuinely romantic. I just really love this now, now that I'm talking about this. I can't, the thing is I can't decide if I like this more than Act Like It, which is the first book in this series because I do really love it as well. I may like this better. I don't know. Maybe I need to bump this up to a five star because I really did enjoy this. I just thought it was excellent. I highly recommend it. I highly recommend the entire, this is the fourth in a series. All four of them are really good, like just solid, well done contemporary romance. If you're somebody who's not in, like there's more sex in this one and more described sex in, in this one than they're usually, like than they're often, well, I guess the last one had some too. These tend to be on the sweeter end of romance though. It's not like erotic. It's definitely not like in the erotica realm at all. So if you're looking for something that's not like wall-to-wall -wall sex because that is also something I don't enjoy in my contemporary romance. Um, if you're looking for well-drawn characters, compelling plots, uh, actual adult humans who can communicate in some real way and the conflicts are never just like, oh, I have underwear feelings for you, but I'm afraid to have heart feelings because I was wound. Like, if you don't like that conflict, her series are great. And I just really love this. It was just a lovely way to spend some time. Okay, moving into things that I'm currently reading. So uh, a couple things I, today actually, when I'm run out running er errands, when I'm out running, not errors, but errands, I'm going to finish up my audio that I have of 450 from Paddington. This is a reread that I'm doing for Mission Marple and I'm liking it. Like, um, yeah, I'm not sure how I'm going to end up writing it. Stay tuned. But um, I remembered liking this one and I'm liking it on reread as well. We'll talk about it more in my review. I just hit myself with this book. Happy Sunday morning. Um, so I'm reading this and then I am trying to get through Educated, but it is grim. I can see why people like this. It's really good. And I need to read this because my aunt gave me her copy because she wants to talk to somebody about this book. So I need to I need to get my act together to do that so that we can we can talk. But um, so I'm making my way through this, but I'm, I'm struggling a little bit just because it's hard. Speaking of things that I am reading that are really hard, but really important, and I suspect this may end up being my favorite book of the year is The Uninhabitable Earth by I think it's David Wallace Wells. Who boy. Okay. I got this book because I heard this guy on Chris Hayes's podcast, which is why is this happening? And I was like, okay, this sounds like it's going to be really hard to listen to, but something that's really important to listen to. So I need to like do this. And so far I cannot listen to this more than like 30 minutes at a time, but it is so important. It's basically about like his whole thesis is people have been like softballing to the public how dire our situation is right now via like re climate change. And that people do that because they are like, oh, psychologically humans can't handle having such bad news. Like we need to make people feel like they can do something. And he's like, basically like, bitch, no. This is so serious. And right now, like they're talking about like, oh, you know, we can reverse things in 12 years. And um, we don't have to hit the two degrees rise Celsius um, that scientists are predicting we can do this. And he's basically saying like, look, reliably, the science is saying that two degrees Celsius increase is like the best we're going to do at this point. And people have to stop care, have to start caring because it could be 
so much worse. Like two degrees is our best case scenario right now. And if it like, and he's basically talking about like what will happen if it's even beyond that. And it is terrifying, but it's like importantly terrifying. And I will talk about it, I'm sure when I finish it, but like, it is a lot. <laughs> it is apocalyptic basically. And I'm really thankful that it exists. And I mean, granted, I think that there's been some critiques of like, you're choosing to interpret this in the most, you know, dire way possible. But I actually think that his point is really important that we need to not like, for something this essential to our like, existential continuation, we need to assume the worst in terms of like, what could happen. Because otherwise, we are all just too complacent, myself totally included. So anyway, that has been a journey. And I'm sure I will have more to say once I'm done with it. But it's a lot, but I think really important. <laughs> so there you go. Okay, and then in terms of like taking a hard pivot into what I'm going to read next. So I've got um, five things that I need to read this month. So I need to read Tightrope by Amanda Quick, which is a mystery, like a historical mystery set in the 20s with like a romantic element thrown in. I need to read The Honey Unhoneymooners by Christina Lauren, which is a kind of rom-com about two people who end up going on their friend's honeymoon when their friends get sick. They hate each other, but I'm gonna guess that they're gonna, these two crazy kids are gonna fall in love. Middle Game, which is a new middle grade fantasy from Shauna McGuire. And I don't remember the premise exactly, but it sounded awesome. And it's Shauna McGuire. I'm into her sort of like short fantasy stuff. And then the other arc, these are all arcs. The other arc that I wanna read this month is The Bride Test by Helen Huang. I think that's next up on the docket for me. Um, I'm very excited. It's the follow up to The Kiss Quotient, which was one of the big kind of like breakout romance titles last year. So that should be great. Um, and then I also want to read Salvation and Death as my in-death pick for the month. I own that ebook, so I don't have to wait on it from the library, which is a nice change of events. So those are the five that I like have to read. Two other ones that I really probably should read this month are Space Opera by Catherine M. Valenti. This is a part of my Goodreads Friends Pick My TBR challenge I'm doing. Also sounds great. It's not that big. I may, I'm traveling at the end of the month, so this may be what I end up taking on that trip. We'll see. And then I have the audio of On Immunity by Eula Biss. So that's the other one for my Goodreads friends pick my TBR challenge that I'd like to get read this month. Beyond that, first let's do the TBR mug. Oh, I should say I made an executive decision that I judge myself for. It's fine if you judge me as well. I just consistently have not been in the mood to read this. I don't think I'm getting the second one as an arc. So I'm just going to relinquish my feeling of urgency or guilt around this particular book. And when I'm in the mood to read it, I will read it, but I'm like taking it off of any like official plans. And I feel good about this decision. So that was one of my TBR mug picks last last month that I was in theory going to read. And I'm just, I'm not going to do it right now. Maybe later in the year, we'll see how things go. Okay, so I did read though Jane Steele from this pick and I really liked it. It was, a, it was definitely a hit last month. So, okay three picks. So the first one is Uprooted by Naomi Novik. Okay. The next one is Year One by Nora Roberts. And last but not least, Born Again Bodies by I think Marie Griffith. That sounds right. Uh, I'm not going to read Born Again Bodies. I think until I get some of these like timed reads off of my TBR, I'm not looking to add um, weightier nonfiction. So it's between Uprooted and Year One. And both of these are ebooks, which is good because I, like I said, I'm traveling at the end of the month. So really, I, hmm, maybe, I don't know. It depends on how some of the other thing. I may try to get to both of these. I'm gonna say that I will definitely though pick Year One as the one that I'm trying to read this month. Um, and as a stretch goal, depending on how things progress and if I'm in the mood, I may also try to get to Uprooted. So I'm, I'm pretty happy at that turn of event. I think year one would actually be a really good airplane book. I think between this and Salvation and Death, I can get two Nora Roberts read on, on the, on the plane. So yeah, I think this will be, this was a fortuitous pick. I think that will fit in well with what I've got going on this month. Okay. And then last but not least, I've got five things here that I would theoretically like to read at least a couple of these. It just will really depend on how a few other things time out. By the way, I know I keep talking about Blood Witch, which I still have not read, but I've officially pushed that to the end of May because that's when Amanda from The Naughty Librarian will be able to read it. So 
I'm just gonna push that off until we can both read it. I'm sure Bethany will have read it before then, but we'll all just catch up eventually. So first I have The Stranger Diaries by Ellie Griffiths. This is a mystery that centers around like a book within a book. And I think our protagonist is a professor of like Gothic literature. It just sounded like kind of a rad mystery. So that sounds good. Then we've got Killing November, which is a YA mystery thriller kind of thing that's set at like an assassin board school. And I'm hoping that this can fill a little bit of the void that I have from uh, the Book of the Ancestors trilogy now that I no longer have Warrior Assassin Nun boards boarding school in my life. Uh, I'm hoping maybe if I really feel the need for that, I can get into that. I have Artificial Condition, which is Martha Wells' follow-up to All Systems Red, and you guys know that I absolutely loved that last month. <clears throat> it's probably my favorite read of the year so far, so I'm definitely excited to continue in that series. It's also super small, so I think this might be a good, like, weeknight kind of pick. Uh, this I am so excited about. This is, and of these, maybe this and um, the Martha Wells are probably the two I'm most likely to get to. This is a thriller or this is a uh isolated house mystery which you guys if you watch this channel probably know that that's maybe my favorite trope in mystery I absolutely love that uh it's an isolated house mystery that is set after the nuclear apocalypse has come and it's all this these survivors who have like clustered together in an abandoned Swiss hotel and then people start getting murdered sold. That sounds great. That sounds like something that I will absolutely love. And then finally, Girls with Sharp Sticks by Suzanne Young. So I, if I'm remembering rightly, this is, this is basically a mystery that is set in a school that is like shaping perfect girls for the marriage market. And then I think they start taking revenge or like there's some sort of like mystery or thriller plot. It is a YA mystery thriller, I guess is the long and the short of it with some like, I think kind of preternatural or like speculative fiction type elements. So yeah, that sounds great as well. So um, all any of those would be great if I can get to them this month. We'll just have to kind of see how things go and, and how things end up sort of shaking out. So I also, well, also my favorite thing is Monsters. I started that. I'm having a little trouble getting into it, to be totally honest with you. We'll see. We'll see how that ends up going. Um, I'm definitely going to finish it, but I'm not as hooked into it as I thought I would be, which is why I kind of put it down. So anyway, I think those are all of my like current reading plans for the month of April. Uh, like I said, this month is going like way better than last month did. So I'm really excited about what I'm reading. I think I got over the hump of um, sort of like the arc reading I needed to do. I definitely still have like a number of arcs I need to get through, but um, I feel more comfortable about what I have to read and the amount of time I have to read it. And there's enough variety in what I have left that I'm able to do quite a bit of mood reading. So I think, one, honestly, once I get through early May, or I, I'm not gonna have, I only have a few books left really for the year that I want to try to get as an arc. So I think kind of once we hit the mid-year point, my reading will transition back almost totally to mood reading. And I think that, you know, I relearned this lesson over and over again, but I think that ends up always being for the best. So I think that will do it for my what I'm reading right now video. Definitely let me know if you've had any big hits or disappointments so far this month, what you're thinking about reading next, etc. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social meds if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below. And I think that will do it. I hope you're having a super lovely day and I will just talk to you soon. Bye!